And I said, why? She said, it improves your looks by 50%. I didn't appreciate that. I've learned not to talk back. The reason why some of y'all stay in a doghouse, you ain't learned to say, yes, dear. We got in a bad argument the other day, and I told her, I said, honey, I don't understand how the Lord can make anybody so beautiful, yet so dumb. That wasn't good. And she said, well, the reason why I'm beautiful is so you'd love me and marry me. And I'm dumb, so I'll live with you. Uh -huh. It wasn't funny at the time. But I'm glad God's people can have a good time. Amen. Praying for the meeting. I hope a bucket of honey turns over. Amen. And the shouts are loud. A CNI dog won't run through here for six months. Amen. God is good. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. Praise God. First Kings chapter 18. And I want to begin reading tonight in verse number 41. Well, Trevor, thank you for extending another kind invitation to come. And I appreciate the goodness of the Lord. First Kings chapter 18, verse number 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. He said, I got a word from God. It's about to get on around here. So they're expecting God to honor his word. By the way, God did then, God will now, and God always will. Verse 42, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now. Look toward the sea. And the Bible said, And he went up and looked and said, and Underline this little phrase, this will be our text tonight, There is nothing. Say that with me tonight. There, there is, is nothing. nothing. Verse 43, And he said, Just forget it. Let's just go home. Let's just throw in the towel. Let's just turn back. I guess it's over. I guess this is the first time God's not going to honor his word. I must be reading out one of them funny Bibles. Let me tell you what it says in the real book. And he said, go. Again. Seven times. He said, I know you ain't seen nothing, you ain't heard nothing, you ain't felt nothing. But I know something. Amen. Well, glory. Yeah. Go. Whoop. <laughs> I'm enjoying reading this text. Amen. Go again. Amen. Seven times. Yes. Verse 44, and it came to pass at the second time. <laughs> at the third time. No, say it with me. At the <laughs> Complete obedience. Yes. Obey God when you don't understand it. Right. Obey God when you don't even like it. Right. Obey God when you don't even want to. Amen. God will honor that. Yeah. Amen. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, thou riseth a little cloud out of the sea, oh, yeah. like a man's hand. I want to say, boy, that ain't no man's hand out there. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. Say this out loud with me. And there was a great rain. And Ahab went and rode and went to Jezreel. In our text tonight, they went from no rain to the sound of rain, till it looked like it was going to rain, to a great rain. Amen. And I'm glad when there ain't been no rain, we've not seen no rain. If God says it's going to rain, get the umbrella. God's word will not return unto him void. And even though the young servant 
when he went the first time, heard nothing, felt nothing, saw nothing. The man of God said, you just go. And you go again. And you go seven times. And when he obeyed the command, guess what? He got to see the blessing and the promise of God. You know why he got to see that blessing and promise of God? Because he kept going. Amen. Even when there was nothing. And for a while, I want to preach on that tonight, on how to keep going when there's nothing. And if you live in the real world long enough, you're going to go through a nothing season. You're going to pray and seemingly there's nothing. You're going to hope and trust and believe and seemingly there's nothing. You're going to preach everything you know and some things you may not even sure of and there'll be nothing. I, I'm really not impressed with these people that try to convince us that every time they pray, they shake heaven and earth. Yeah. And every time they preach, they knock a grand slam home run. They lie. Yeah. Somebody asked me, said, Brother Joe, have you ever struck out? I said, honey, there's been times I didn't even show up at the game. Everybody I've witnessed to hadn't been saved. Every door I knocked upon, I didn't lead somebody to Christ. Every street that I walked, I didn't have a row of converts. Every song I've ever seen, I didn't get a standing ovation. In fact, come to think about it, I ain't ever got one of them while I was a saint. And I have preached several sermons that I didn't even enjoy myself. I took my wife with me the other day and I made the awfulest mess you ever seen trying to preach. I had Daniel up a sycamore tree. I had Jonah on the back of a donkey. I had Elijah down in a hog pen. And I think the prodigal son died on his way back from a pulp farm. I have no idea. And so I got in the car on the way home and I was trying to ease into a little conversation with Miss Arthur. And I said, well, how did I do? Now let me tell you preacher's wife something tonight. When he gets in the car and he asks you how did he do, he does not want to hear the truth. You say, well, Brother Joe, what if I have to feel? That's what 1 John 1, 9 is in the Bible for preacher's wives. And I said, maybe how did I do? And in that old-fashioned way of cutting me down, she said, well, <laughs> you do have better material. <laughs> and I had to agree with her. I put that sermon in file 13. Anybody here besides me ever took a bunch of outlines? God wasn't in a hundred miles of that. Brother, I preached and there's been nothing. I prayed and there's been nothing. I give it the best shot I've got and it looks like and seems like and feels like there's nothing. But I've come to tell you nothing time ain't quitting time. Nothing time is not giving up time. Nothing time is not going back time. Because God is always something when there is nothing. Yeah, yeah. And when you've seen nothing, heard nothing, felt nothing, ain't done nothing, and the devil tells you you're nothing, God, who is everything, yeah. is up to something. Yeah, yeah, and it won't be the first time nor the last time God steps in your nothing and does something. You see, when God steps in your nothing and does something, he gets all the glory and we don't get nothing. Because I'm glad he is the God of something. Even when I am nothing. And I believe what you have in this text tonight is an Old Testament illustration of a New Testament verse. The New Testament verse says, James 5, 17, 
that Elijah was a man, listen to this King James phrase, yeah, yeah. subject to like passion. That means he fought the same battles that you and I fought. That means he had the same weaknesses and the same disappointments that we have. Because Elijah is a man subject like Elijah. Uh, he is not only a man of great faith, but he's a man of great fear. He is not only a man of great success, but he's a man of great failure. I mean, not only does he know what it's like to soar with the eagles on the mountain, but honey, he knows what it's like to crawl on his face in the back. But Elijah's life is living proof that our geographical location does not diminish God's divine ability to meet our needs. I enjoyed that so much. Can I say that again? That Elijah's life is proof that our geographical location does not diminish God's divine ability to meet our needs. For he is not only God on the mountain, but he's God in the valley. He is not only God when the fire is falling, but he's God when the buzzards are a flying. He is not only God when I feel good, but he's God when I feel rotten. He is not only God when I'm being blessed, but he's still God when I ain't seen nothing, heard nothing, or felt nothing. And Elijah and his servant, they're going through a nothing season. And we all are going to have those nothing seasons. But I'm glad when you're in the midst of nothing, wait on God who is everything. And God will step in your nothing and he will do something. Let's look in this text tonight on how to keep going. When there's nothing. Four words unlock the text tonight. The first word. Write down the word command. The word command. Someone said brother Joe. Why did this young man. Keep on going. When there was nothing. Well. He was told to. Amen. And can I run a rabbit if I hurry. There's nothing wrong with God's people doing right for the simple reason he said so. Amen. Someone said give me yeah. one good reason why we go to church. Because he said so. Yeah. Give me one good reason why we preach the word. Because he said so. Yeah. Give me one good reason why we ought to tithe. And if you're a pastor, you like that one. Tithe. Because he said so. Give me one good reason why we ought to be soul winners. Because he said so. Why should we live right, talk right, do right, be a witness? Because uh, he said so. Again tonight, there is nothing wrong with God's people doing what we ought to do for the simple reason he said to do it. He has a command. And I'm glad God has commanded us to go. Amen. God has commanded us to go again. Amen. When we don't feel like it, when we don't yeah. see nothing, we don't understand it, God said, go. Right. I'm glad there is a command for you and I tonight that is not hinged upon circumstances. Right. Whether it's night, God says go. Whether it's day, God says go. Whether we're having great success or great failure, God says go. Now listen, there is a joy in serving the Lord. There is a thrill in serving the Lord. There is a whoopee in serving the Lord. But I've come to tell you when the joy is not there, and the fire is not there. And the excitement is not there. And that desire is not what it used to be. The command is still there. We don't serve God for the joy. We serve God because of the command. And we get to the joy. We don't serve God because we want to. 
We serve God because we're supposed to. And if we do what you're supposed to, it won't be long until you get the feeling like you want to. Let me ask you this. The reason why the sun got up this morning is because he said so. In a little while, the moon's going to glow for the simple reason he said so. The wind is going to bump the clouds and send us some rain. Because he said so. Amen. Them little bees are going to pollinate the grass and the flowers. Because he said so. The fish are going to swim in the water. And the birds are going to fly in the sky. And the lion is going to roar. For the simple reason God said so. Amen. The angels Amen. will fall before him. Saying holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Because he said so. And let me just say this. If the birds and the fishes and the animals and the angelic beings do what they do for the simple reason he said so, then how much more should we that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus regenerated by the power of the Holy Ghost of God and have our names written in the Lamb's book of life just do right because he said so. Amen. He didn't explain to the boy why. He didn't explain to the boy the way. He just said go. And when there is nothing, we keep on praying because he said so. We keep on preaching because he said so. We keep on going because he said so. And again, there's nothing wrong with God's church doing right because he said so. Amen. Amen. How many of you had an old-fashioned mom and dad? <coughs> and they did the commanding, and you did the going. Some of these kids today would have met an early grave if they'd have yes. had my mama and my dad. Man, they told me what to do, and I start to say if I was brave enough, but I better interject if I was dumb enough to say why. Boy, they declare them off a piece of real estate. They would say something that it looked like brought joy to them. Cause I said so. Man, I'm glad I have a heavenly father. That is because he said so. And tonight we keep on going when there's nothing. You say, but I prayed and nothing happened. Pray again. But I preached a sermon and nothing happened. Preach again. But I hope, I trusted, I believe, hope and trust again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said go, go again, go seven times. And the reason why he kept going when there was nothing is because he was told to do it. Amen. Aren't you glad for the command of our Heavenly Father? Amen. The command. He did it because he said so. Right, right. Secondly, write this word down tonight. The word compliance. The Bible said in our text, I love it. So he went. So he went. So he went. He just simply obeyed orders. Right. Can I just clear me off a piece of ground right here? Everybody is looking for some secret formula to live the victorious Christian life. And I can give you one point that sums it all. Obedience. Just obey God. Boy, God showed me this. Listen to this. It is not that boy's responsibility to make it rain. Think about this. It is beyond his ability to make it rain. That boy in the best day he's got cannot make it rain. He's not held responsible whether it rains or not. His only responsibility is go, go, go. There's one thing about it. It may be nothing, but it's going to stay nothing, and he ain't going to see it until he obeys. Amen. God will honor faith, but we got to exercise it. God will honor preaching, but we got to do it. 
God to honor life. But we got to shout it. Now, because I believe in soul winning and because our church knocks on doors, I have been accused from the hyper Calvinist that Brother Joe doesn't believe in the sovereignty of God. If you don't think I believe in the sovereignty of God, you're a cripple too high for Christ. Amen. Let me give you a real good lesson on sovereignty. This is how sovereign God is. He is so sovereign that it didn't intimidate him to create man and give him a choice and give him a will, knowing that the majority of them would refuse him and reject him. Amen. I enjoyed that point. I'm going to give it some more. You want a lesson in sovereignty? God is so sovereign that he breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of man, knowing that a lot of them would spit it back in his face and blasphemy. But he loved him anyhow, and he breathed on him anyhow. This Bible, right along with the sovereignty of God, never at odds, but always holding hands, is man's responsibility to respond to the sovereign acts of God. Yes. How many believe in this room tonight that Jesus tasted death for every man? Yes. How many in this room tonight believes that whosoever will let him come? Yes. Jesus yes. died for every man. Yes. He bled for you. Yes. He died for you. Yes. But if you do not exercise faith yes. in the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and trust Him as your Savior, you will die without God go to hell. I can't make it rain. It ain't my responsibility to make it rain. It's beyond my ability to make it rain. But I get to go look. I get to go look. I can't make it rain, but I can go look. I'm enjoying that point. Can I squeeze a little more out of it? Moses could not part the Red Sea, but God let him lift up the pole. He could not hear the people from the bites of the serpent, but he could lift up the brazen serpent. Gideon can't defeat the army, but he can wield the sword. Samson can't defeat the Philistines, but he can whack a jawbone. David can't beat the giant, but he can sling a sling. The disciples can't turn the water into wine, but they get to fill up the pots. The little boy can't feed the 5,000, but he can pack a lunch. Mary and Martha and the Jews can't raise Lazarus from the dead, but somebody gets to roll the stone away. Lord, have mercy. I can't save anybody. I can't emancipate anybody. I can't revive anybody, but I can obey my Heavenly Father and preach the gospel and show them Jesus. And I do my part, and God does his part. I'm glad he. Let's me get in on it. Time out. News flash. God ain't looking for somebody to turn the water into wine. He's looking for pot fillers. Regardless of what Benny Hinn says, he's not looking for somebody to raise the dead. He's looking for somebody to roll the stone away. He's not looking for somebody that'll feed 5,000. He just wants somebody to pack the lunch. He ain't looking for folks that can part the water. He's just looking for somebody that'll lift up the rod. You know what I am tonight? I'm a rod lifter. I'm a jawbone whacker. I'm a sling slinger. I'm a pot filler. I'm a stone roller. I'm a Jesus preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, the only responsibility we have is obey God. Obey God. You can't make your church grow. You can't make your church grow. You can't make your church grow. You can't make your ministry grow. You can't win your city to Christ. But there is a God that can. And a gospel that can. And a Holy Ghost that can. Let's obey. Let's obey. Let's obey. He is being obedient to the command. And God's going to bless his obedience. I'm about to enjoy my own preaching, I think. So he went. Oh, what I love about this young man, he didn't argue. He didn't say why. He did not need a three-point dissertation on why he should go. He just obeyed. He just obeyed. 
He's got enough faith in his preacher. He's got enough faith in that man of God. He's just obeying the orders. You say, Brother Joe, I preached last Sunday and not one thing happened. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Amen. But I witnessed to somebody and not one thing happened. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But I've been praying for my son and the more I pray, the worse he gets. I ain't seen nothing. Well, just let me tell you, I don't know a whole lot about gardening. I told my precious wife the other day if this thing goes to pot and we have to go living like our forefathers, me and her would starve to death. Because number one, I can't grow it. And number two, if I did, she can't cook it. Can I get an amen? You said, Dr. Arthur, can't your wife cook? No. It's against the commandment. Just let me say it. You old timers, old timers that married them old fashioned women, that submissive and does it a thing they tell you and they cook biscuits and they make food from scratch. God bless you. Hallelujah. More power to you. Pray for the rest of us. <laughs> old young preacher sent me today. He said, Dr. Arthur, I'm one of them old fashioned women men that obeys her husband and, and cooks from scratch and makes biscuits. I said, son, women like that are like parking spaces. They're taken or handicapped. Can I get a witness in the back? <laughs> Son, if we have to go back living like we did, Casey, I'll have to eat up at your house. I will starve to death because I can't grow it and Miss Arthur can't cook it. You said, I'm going to tell her you said that. I told her before I left the house. That's why I'm here. I don't know a whole lot about gardening, but I know this much about it. You don't plow the field today. Go out there the next day and plant the seed. And go out the next day and pick the beans and shuck the corn. Amen. In fact, you can be a good plower. You can be a good sower. And you go back the next day, nothing. And go back the next day, nothing. In fact, go back several days and there's nothing. It don't look like nothing. It don't taste like nothing. It don't seem like nothing. But up under all of that nothing, where you can't see, there's something going on under the surface. And you go back a few more days, and where there was nothing, there'll be a little green shoot, and there'll be a little stalk, and one day you'll have you some cream corn. You say, I prayed and nothing happened. Obey God and pray again. But I preached my heart out, and they all went to sleep. Fire it up one more time. Preacher, it is not your responsibility to make it rain. It's beyond your ability to make it rain. The only responsibility you have is obey God. Obey God. Obey God. Let's trust Amen. and obey. Amen. Command. Compliance. Write this word down. Number three. Consistency. He said in our text tonight, go. And I like his word. Again. Amen. Then he said, seven times. And so he went. And it came to pass the seventh time. He, whoo, he saw the little cloud coming out of the sea. You know why he saw the little cloud coming out of the sea? Because he was consistent. Beside of that word in the Greek, write down this word, faithfulness. I'm living proof everybody can't be a Bible expositor. I'm really living proof everybody can't be a great singer. I'm triple proof everybody can't give a million dollars to the work of God. But you know what I can do? I can be faithful. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's something that every Christian can do. Faithful. And can I say this tonight? Faithfulness honors God. And God honors faithfulness. Oh, I'm glad tonight the criteria of the judgment is not well done by good and successful servant. 
It's well done by good and faithful servant. Amen. I'm going to give you my opinion on that. I believe the reason why it's based on faithfulness and not success, I've got this sneaky feeling that our definition of success may be a long way from what God knows it really is. We've got it in our head somehow that success is hooked to size. No, success is hooked to sort more than it is size. You know what I think a successful preacher is? You know what I think a successful Christian is? A person that's followed God and given God their best and given God their all and they leave no stones unturned. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, one day I want to hear the one that bled for me and died for me said, well done by good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few and I'll make you rulers over many. There never has been and they never will be a substitute for consistency and faithfulness. I'll encourage you tonight, preach on, shout on, witness on, soul it on, pray on. Just do it one more time. Consistent. Seven times. Brother Goosby, I'm not like some of mine and your friends. I won't know everything about the Bible. Steve and I have some friends. They know everything about the Bible. If you don't believe them, ask them. I got one of my friends that's so smart, he knows how many hires is in the horse's tail in Revelation 19. He's got a sermon on the Antichrist. And I said to him the other day, I said, Dear Lord, that message you got on the Antichrist is so good. You act like you know who he is. He said, I should. I've been married to his daughter for 40 years. <laughs> I don't know every... And I found out they don't know as much as they think they do either. But I don't know all about the Bible. So I don't know. Brother Trevor, I, I don't know how far it was. Hey, man, brother, brother, I want you to help me. I want you to be Elijah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Elijah. It's the best I can do right now. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go no further since you're about to fall. Just stand right there. <laughs> oh, get on up here. I want you to be Elijah. Now, I, I don't know. You can go ahead and sit down, brother. Bless your heart. Get you a little bit of healing in here for this thing. Jesus. I don't know. I don't know how far it was from where Elijah is sitting to where the young man had to go and look. The Bible doesn't say. I do know he had to go, so he just didn't take his head. He had to go. I don't know if it's 10 feet. I don't know if it's 20 feet. I don't know if it's a mile and a half. I don't know. But ever how far it was from where Elijah is sitting to that boy went to look. I promise you he had a well-worn path to nothing. And remember this. Every time he goes, he's got to go right back. Yeah. So he's been more than once. He's been twice. Yeah. 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 Man. He's literally made by the end of the text 14 trips yeah. to Amen. nothing. And I promise you after two or three, five or six, seven and eight trips to nothing, he's got the path to nothing memorized. Yeah. Yeah. He knows every stick. He knows every hole. He knows every rock. He knows what both sides of the road looks like. He's probably tired of looking. And he goes to the man of God and said, nothing. And when he said nothing, Elijah said, nothing. told him there ain't nothing. Huh? <laughs> nothing. Go again. I done told him there's nothing. Now listen, I done told you now. Nothing. Nothing. Now what do you want me to do? Go again. <laughs> it ain't bad. 
been selling jack. <laughs> Tired of going. Yeah. 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 They got more yeah. out going. Tell it. Tell it. Hey, man. What if you got aggravated going? Oh. Yeah. I'm half mad about it. Yeah. I imagine about that left a trip. He went like, well, praise God, I get to go again. <laughs> nothing. He goes and goes and goes and goes, and there's nothing. But every time he comes back and says nothing, go again. Oh, boy. Some of us have a well-worn path from our study to our pulpit. Don't even know why I'm trying this again. I did this last Sunday. That was nothing. And the Sunday before that, that was nothing. And I've been worn out with nothing. So I'm going to ask my boss what I'm supposed to do when there's nothing. You're kidding. <laughs> But I ain't felt nothing. It don't matter. Go again. I ain't seen nothing. Go again. I ain't felt nothing. Go again. I ain't heard nothing. Go again. Lord, I just want to tell you, preacher man, you may have a worn out path to nothing. Mama, your prayer life may be a worn out path to nothing. Bus worker, soldier, say of God, you may feel like you have a worn out path to nothing. But I'll come to tell you, preach one more time. Consistent and he's being faithful and he does it again and he does it again. Turn to somebody right now. Turn to somebody right now. Turn to somebody right now. Hold up your finger and say, One more time. One more time. Preach one more time. Shout one more time. Pray one more time. Knock on the door one more time. word down. Confidence. Amen. Amen. Confidence. Yeah. You see, past experience births present confidence. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. You say, what does that mean? Knowing God's done it before, He just might show up and do it one more time. I see that old boy. He done got him a worn out path to death. Yeah, yeah. In the back of his mind, he's a thinking. Now, I done told that man, ain't nothing. I done told him there's nothing. And he keeps telling me to go again. <laughs> if he's telling me to go, and I done told him there's nothing. But he, he, he just keeps telling me to go when there's nothing. He must know something I don't know. Oh, yeah. 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 just got to ask him. Sir, do you know something I don't know? Yeah. And I believe he'd say, well, I may not know something you don't know, but I've been where you've not been and I've seen what you ain't seen. Yeah. 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 What do you mean by that, man of God? He said, well, sit down here, son. Let me talk to you. I was nothing when God found me yeah. and my daddy was nothing and my family was nothing and I didn't have nothing. And God took me to a place called a little brook yeah. And he brought me bread and flesh in the morning yeah. and bread and flesh in the evening yeah. and a drink out of the brook. Yeah. 
Hey. Well, that was nothing. And then he moved me down hey. to this winter lady's house. Hey. And I didn't have nothing and she didn't have nothing. And that was hardly nothing in the barrel and nothing in the cruise at all. But we ate out of nothing because God is something. And I just ate till there was nothing. And then tragedy struck. Then tragedy really struck. Her only son died suddenly. Her husband's already dead. Now her only living son has died. Now she don't have nothing. But I prayed over nothing. And God raised that boy from the dead. I don't know if he's reading or not, boy, but up there in the first part of this chapter, we went on that mountaintop, and I had nothing, and you had nothing, and all them enemies thought we were nothing. But we called on God who is everything, and we called on God who is something, and God did something. Boy, it's something what God did. And he sent that fire. Son, I'm just going to tell you, if he can show up by the brook, if he can show up by the barrel, if he can show up by the boy, if he can show up by the battle, Illustrate it and I'll be done. Anybody in this room tonight saved and know it on your way to heaven? This is a Baptist meeting and we ain't voted on nothing. And when I go to a Baptist church and we don't vote on nothing, I get nervous. So we're going to vote on this. If you're saved, raise your right hand. If you know it, raise your left hand. If you're glad about it, cross about it quick. See, I told you you was going to shout one day. day. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How many tonight? thinks it's a big deal for God to reach further down than you can reach up. How many thinks it's a big deal that he looked beyond your fault and saw your need and you of every stick and rotten fit of sin you ever thought about committing? And if God can save us and take us to heaven and lift us out of the degradation of sin, everything else is small but here's the God. Because the greatest of all miracles is not when the fire falls. The greatest of all miracles is not when it rains. The greatest of all miracles is not when the glory rolls. But the greatest of all miracles is when God saves a sinner. Sets him free by the power of God. And if God can do it, God can do anything. Hallelujah. Confidence. And so he goes that final time. And said, what do you know? I see something. Well, glory. And he runs up there and says, I'm excited. It ain't a bigger one. It's a little one. But it's better than what I saw before. And I believe the man of God said, he don't need a big one. That wasn't no big rod that Moses had. That ain't no big jawbone Samson had. Now, what no big sling that David, that David had? What no big old gourmet meal the boy had? Mm, God don't need a big one. He just needs something. So I see a little cloud, sides of a man's hand. And I hear that old man of God say, Son, I know you mean well, but that ain't no man's hand. Well, whose hand is it? I'm glad you asked. Son, the same hand that stepped out on nothing yeah. and hung the moon yeah. on nothing and hung the sun on nothing and flipped the stars on nothing and yeah. made man who was nothing yeah. and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul that hand that shielded Moses that hand that locked the jaws of the lion that hand that protected the Hebrew children that hand that touched the blind raised the dead, cleansed the leper the hand that was nailed to the cross the hand that was raised on the other side of the tomb the hand that reached further down can you reach up you say preacher I prayed and there's nothing I preached and there's nothing I'm going through a nothing season go one more time you're about to run slap in into the hand of I got a wild imagination. Can I use it before I go sit down? The Bible said there came a great rain. I believe that means in southern language a frost rain. 
a gully washer. Yeah. Our friends up north would say, it got on, brother. It got on. Son, I believe Israel got rained on. I believe old wicked Ahab got rained on. I believe Elijah got rained on. And some were out there getting drenched. Is that little servant? He may have had his tongue out drinking. Son, I believe as the rain drops as a fall. Lord, I got. I'm about to run right here. Amen. That water and that rain's running down that little. Who knows? He may have been out there stomping in some mud holes. Who knows? But I believe he's a saying something like this. He did it again. Yeah. He did it again. And I believe there's a wise old man going. Well, I tried to tell you. Glad you will again. That's my next point. I believe he said, Well, I'm glad I went again. I'm glad I went again. Somebody in this building tonight, you need to pray again. You need to fire it up and preach one more time. You need to trust God one more time. Because when you run into everything from a God who is something, when you're nothing, you'll be glad. One more time. Yeah, One more time. Yeah, Just keep on going, honey, when there's nothing. Yeah, it won't be the first time nor the last time God stepped in nothing and done something. Because right. He's yeah, just right. God and He can't help it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let's stand together. Lord, we love you tonight. Yeah. Lord, when we are nothing, say nothing, done nothing, you're still everything. Lord, just help us to be faithful. Help us to obey. Help us, Lord, just to keep on and keep it on. Even when there's nothing. Lord, we're expecting you to do something. Because you are an awesome, mighty, sovereign, powerful, heavenly Father. We give you praise. Bless your people tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, God bless you. Well, Lord, thank God. 180 down the soft. 180. <coughs>